hello everyone in this video we're going to talk about the electrical double layer capacitor so let's see the working of EDLCs there are two phases the charging phase so in the charging phase we what happens we attach a charger to the EDLC and the electron flows to the negative terminal and creates the negatively charge over one of the electrodes that we call the negative electrode hence there is also a positive electrode where the positive charges uh, come. Now this actually attracts the positive ions in the electrolyte and the negative ions gets attracted to the other side that's a positive electrode. So positive electrode attracts negative ions and the negative electrode attracts positive ions. Now there is also a separator in between which actually prevents the short circuit of the uh, whole EDLC because if these two electrodes get connected then there will be a short circuit that we don't want. Now what happens is that there is now the discharging phase. So before that we see that there are two layers formed that is the electrical double layer is formed the Helmholtz layer and here this layer actually makes uh, it possible that we have a different in, in in the potential so potential is created in the edlc as well now during the discharging phase we remove the charging now it's about to discharge so we let's say we take a load and let's say it's a bulb for example and now due to this charge uh, because these ions have attracted these positive charge so now this electron will flow back and actually provide the current so it will glow and hence what happens that now since the electrons is depleting from here because of the current see ions will come back to their original positions and the charge would be gone that's the simple principle of the EDLCs and basically there are two phases the charging and discharging phases and it it generally works on the electrostatic forces itself and there is no movement of electrons through the electrolyte rather it's about getting the ions to the layer so we can also see it as two capacitors in series one at this ele electrode and other at this so what is what are the EDLCs so and how are they different so basically we can classify we see that there are capacitors supercapacitors battery and fuel cell but how are they mostly classified so we can map them over the power density and energy density where we see that the highest energy density energy density actually means that the amount of energy that could be stored per weight of the whole system so generally we see that battery and fuel cells why they are mostly used in mo most of the uh, batteries mostly used in most of the applications because it can actually store m a lot of energy while power density so for capacitor the mostly the application is that the fast discharge or fast charging that's where it's it can give out a lot of charge in a small amount of time so that's why we want both things to be together and super capacitors are the one which have a good amount of power density as well as a good amount of energy density our ultimate goal is however to reach over this region where both power and energy densities are quite high but till now super capacitors are kind of uh, intimeter, intim, intermediate in between these two and hence it's it has a lot of scope in the future so basically capacitors they have low capacitance and that's why the energy density is also less but super capacitors are also high capacitance also the energy density is comparatively more than capacitors now let's looking looking to the history mostly in 1876 Fitzgerald actually implemented the dielectric capacitors that are the traditional capacitor with just foil electrodes and now the picture of the whole 
डबल लेयर कैपेसिटर केम इन टू पिक्चर लाइक दे इट हैपन वेन निपॉन इलेक्ट्रिक कॉरपोरेशन स्टार्टेड इट इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी एट सो दे डबल लेयर कैपेसिटर्स नाउ अ वेरी रिसेंट थिंग इज इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी नाइन सरफेस रिडॉक्स रिएक्शंस वेयर दी सूडो कैपेसिटर वॉज बिल्ड एंड देयर वॉज दिस फेराडिक चार्ज ट्रांसफर बिटवीन द इलेक्ट्रोड एंड आय ओके so it was not just that the charge was accumulated at the electrode but the charge was being transferred to the electrodes and ions okay so super capacitor versus capacitor the main idea behind them is a capacitor has less capacitance because it has a dielectric which which actually is acting as a insulator okay whereas super capacitor has electrolyte where the ions are there which could actually carry more energy that's why the more energy density is high also the capacitor is relatively cheap and the ultimate aim for super capacitors to become commercial is that they need to make be made in a way that they are less costly so there are also different kind of capacitors once the dielectric one where these two electrodes are separated with the dielectric so and now there was a in between thing that the electrolytic capacitors where there is electrolyte but let's say there is an oxide layer film the aluminum so at one side only it's kind of a capacitors the other side is not playing much role just this positive charge would actually tend to create the negative charge over here so it's kind of a one layer only because of this oxide film formed at only one layer while in electrolytic double layer capacitors so in electrochemical edlcs there is a double layer so both ways it is about to carry more and more charge that's why the energy density is also higher compared to to this previous methods now important parameters in edlcs is that one main thing is that it they are use mostly carbon or activated carbon or carbon nanotubes or something because that has a high surface area and the more the area the more the ions would be able to absorb on the surface of the electrode and this is a uh, sem the sanning electron microscopy image of one of the like electrodes and we can see these pores are there so in the pores the ions could go now important note is there on the pore size that what should be the pore size of this electrodes material basically it is found that that uh, optimum pore size is gives give the cap normalized capacitance to be highest so that's why the pore size is almost about 0.7 while we'll see the the actually ions are also uh, 0.7 nanometer so this is nanometer this is angstrom so 0.7 so when the ion size is about the same size as pore size then the capacitance is drastically become increases and if we go beyond this then it decreases and over here also decreases so there is an optimum that pore size for the electrodes major ap applications include that it could be used as power sources or regenerative braking regenerative braking means that the kinetic energy that when we drive the vehicle the we are actually actually the driving the wheels are moving so the kinetic energy is getting stored in the supercapacitors while just when we apply the brakes what we can use is that the energy that is stored we can then use it to apply the brakes so this is one important application while there is a e bus with super capacitors in china in shanghai and we can also use it in backup power or voltage stabilizer etc advantage is major advantage is that it has a very high working temperature and also quick charging and greater life cycle is quite important because that's why it is very useful in some of the applications like regenerative braking 
high energy storage is there as compared to capacitors so better than capacitors however for battery uh, it's still low but the main idea is that its life cycle is so much because it can be uh, charged about million of times while batteries dry up quickly so major disadvantage is because is high cost okay we don't see super capacitors much because it's quite expensive also the energy density is lower than battery so people are just using the battery but when most of the batteries get exhausted then probably super capacitors are actually they will switch to super capacitors more and more because even if it has a le less energy density it has a longer si cycle time but the problem is the ac now if we use ac alternate current instead of dc then one side of the electrode will be positive then after some time it will become negative so ions won't get attracted that's the problem so these small disadvantages are there but the cycle life and the uh, intermediate between the pow power density and energy density makes it quite a viable source of energy so thank you and i hope you get all of the info the main info basic info for adlcs and meet you in a different video kindly subscribe thank you